Good evening, dear respected audience. Now, let me start with a question. How many of you have heard of the term hacking? And from my point of view, right from when I was six years old, hacking already had a significance in my life. It fascinated me. It took me into a fantasy land. It had two meanings. The first one being cracking the password of my iPad, which was assigned by my mom. And I assure you that each, every, each and every one of us kids in the audience can relate to this in some way, of the other, some way or the other. Because there must be a point of time where our parents didn't want us to misuse the iPad. The second one being the rather obvious one. A kid, or you could say a teenager, a shady teenager, puts on his shades, puts on his hood, and walks down into his basement. He then turns on his iMac Pro, the Intel Xeon. And then, he rapidly types in 6,000 lines of code onto a black screen with green text and slams the enter button. And then, he gets a message. Access granted. You have now gained access to Bill Gates' bank account. And I'm pretty sure all of us present in the audience would one day like to have access to Bill Gates' bank account. But not in this way. And as I grew, hacking got more meanings in my life. Such as, when I went to grade 4, Hacking meant how to download Minecraft for free. Yeah. And all of us, we would try various methods, APK, Minecraft.APK, Aptoid, and all these weird jailbreaks. Obviously, they were very unethical. I feel sad for more time. And this was all it meant to me. And little did I know, in the background, there were multinational companies, such as Alabad, Imad, and more on. All they were doing were hacking, were hiring these certain individuals. These individuals were called ethical hackers, and they practiced the art of ethical hacking. And all of them were millionaires, and they had so much of knowledge. And I could say that I salute them, because they do the wrong thing for the right reason. And as said by Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and they fascinated me. These guys are my role models, such as David Kennedy. And I was unaware of this. I was totally unaware of this. And when, once I went to grade age, I was at a district gather contest, where my friend Aryansh introduced me to the art of ethical hacking. He told me, you like computers, you like coding, check it out. And I told him, no, I think I can use my brain for better reasons, because I was totally unaware of what ethical hacking was. But the next day when I woke up, I had a nagging feeling in my soul. And I realized that this was my calling. And he had told me to check out a PDF. But I was still thinking, is this my calling? And I realized that it was. I had missed the road once, but I had found the U-turn, and that's where my journey to ethical hacking began. So I checked out the PDF. For your information, it's called Ethical Hacking for Dummies, which is just another code name for us average humans and not tech-savvy individuals who go by the term hackers. But it was mind-boggling, and I'm being honest. It was like 2,000 lines of JavaScript on one page, and there were at least 100 pages. And I think we all know it takes more than an average human to check 2 million lines of JavaScript. So this, this fascinated me, and I realized to go, I decided to go my own way. I decided to do some further research on inbuilt tools. And after half an hour, I had found out each operating system such as Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Kali Linux, and Ubuntu have their own inbuilt tools, such as Command Prompt for Windows, Terminal for Mac OS, and Linux. And it was something so great. It was like having the answers to my board exams kept on my table, but me not knowing it was there. <laughs> so I got thorough with a few codes on Command Prompt, and I went ahead and revealed myself to our ICT teacher at school. He was the head, and he told me he was impressed. He said, it's great that you have so much knowledge, you can put it into use, 
but not for unethical reasons. So, a week flew by. My friend and I were in the computer lab, and I told him, I'm done with HTML, let's do something fun. And he asked me what? I said, let's, let's check the network for loopholes. And that's what we did. And while we were doing that, we realized that on a basic system like command prompt, laptops or desktops were already showing on the net view page. So we decided to play a prank on one of my friends. So we hacked into a system and launched a remote shutdown. All this without him knowing of it. And we had given it a timing of up to two minutes for the program to initiate. So in the, in the meantime, we gathered all our friends to take a look what's happening behind him. And when the system message came, you are about to be signed out, life is a long journey, and have a good day. His face was more blank than a blank piece of paper. And we expected that. He didn't know anything what was happening. And I was immensely happy knowing that I had finally accomplished something with my skill set. So I went back to my desktop, I went back to my computer, and I saw a blue screen. This blue screen got me into some fear. This very blue screen meant a red signal. And this also meant the systems administrator knew what I had done. And this also meant I was in deep, deep trouble. But I kept it inside me until I went home. And with pride, I told my mom, Mom, I launched a hack. I launched a hack on someone's computer, and the system administrator came to know about it and PT answered a week. And she told my dad, Look what your son has done. PT answered a week, and I bet we're going to be summoned for it. And another week flew by. And on the D day, I was ready to face the storm. My mom was summoned by the head secondary, and she also the head secondary told her, We're aware of what your child has done. and we encourage him to, uh, to go ahead with developing his skill set. But we, we told the teachers to keep a close eye behind him so he doesn't get into any trouble. I was surprised. And this encouragement from my teachers helped me surge forward into my field of ethical hacking. And I did so. After that, or after now, let's move on to the two objectives of this talk. And the two things that I would like to bring to your awareness. Not every hacker is a devious person. Please understand, there are three types of hackers. One is a white hat hacker, a grey hat hacker, and a black hat hacker, as you see in the picture behind me. But look beyond their hats and look at their eyes. I think you can notice the deviousness of what's happening. So, we'll go into a district in the United States. An ethical hacker is like a sheriff. He helps companies fix their loopholes or their fences, we would say, since we're in a district. And really what he does is he carries out tests on the network and tells the company that these are the loopholes and he fixes them. He fixes the loopholes for them. The grey hat hacker being the, you could say, hacker for hire, who has used this skill set for good purposes, but is a hacker for hire and will hack you if you pay him a lot of money. The black hat hackers, the devious hackers, and the hacker hackers, all of the same black hat hackers, I, I sincerely, I detest them for what they do. These guys are capable to such an extent where they could lock you out of your own phone and send you a message for it, thanks to Apple's notifications. Now the second thing, Please understand that cyber security matters. Now, cyber security is something we don't care about. But did you know that using an ethical hacking or a hacking skill set, for example, let's go into a hospital. Now, with new modern pacemakers, they have wireless capabilities, so every time you have to increase or decrease the pulse rate, you don't have to open the patient's body. And using these wireless capabilities, a hacker, if he wants to kill you, could simply hack into your pacemaker and shut it down. Hence, you get a lower pacemaker, you, low, you, you get a lower heart pace, and you really become low into your grave. And th that's not it. Cybersecurity can threaten world peace. 
It can threaten the peace of your life and my life. A hacker, not more than a few meters away, could hack into your laptop, which has AVG antivirus installed, and with that, he could steal your Emirates ID, your passport, your thumbprint, your Windows Hello facial recognition, and using all of this, he could impersonate the online you and the physical you. After all, that's why they're called devious hackers. So here's some sound advice for you all day web users. If not, just don't download McAfee antivirus or AVG antivirus. If you really want to keep your system secure, go with Norton or Symantec, as these are highly professional systems and it even takes a highly professional hacker to actually hack into your system. Now, every time we go to that Starbucks to grab a cup of coffee, and we're, for some reason we're carrying our laptop with us. Always use a virtual private network or a VPN. Now, this adds an extra layer of security, so a hacker will it'll actually take a lot of more time to get into your system because a VPN uses a system called proxy that sends your request to a server by multiplying the IP addresses. Please do this. Now, keep it locked, like the second button of my blazer. Always keep your device locked. Now, for those of us who are Mac MacBook users, we just tend to close the lid whenever we're done with it and open it to get back to where we want it to. But now, if you lock it, it would take the hacker more time, a delay. Or just keep it locked so no one would physically be able to access your laptop apart from you. And every time you want to show, the, every time you want to store your credentials, such as your Emirates ID, an online pa uh, offline passport copy, or even your bank statements, never do it on your laptop's hard drive. Always store it into an external external flash drive. Let's take, for example, the flash drives by SanDisk, as these have a vault in built to them. So even if someone has got the perfect timing and hacks into your laptop when your drive is plugged in, it would still take him, you could say it'd be impossible for him to hack into your system because of SanDisk's vault system. And just otherwise, always remember that you are a target. So follow these, follow these routines to keep your system safe. Stay ethical and stay safe. Thank you.